I'm with Sister Bridget Tai from Caritas Jerusalem. Now, Sister Bridget, what is Caritas Jerusalem? There's Caritas Internationalis, which is a confederation of about 165 local Caritases in different countries throughout the world. We're a confederation, not a federation, so each Caritas is autonomous, individual, but we are connected together through Caritas Internationalis office in Rome. Caritas Jerusalem was established in 1967 after the Six-Day War, originally to offer humanitarian aid to people displaced, mostly at that time, entirely at that time, probably Palestinians, suffering from the effect of the Six-Day War. And over the years, we have continued to offer, still continue to offer, humanitarian aid, health care and different development projects, food security and other things. So there'd be a big need when you were started in 1967. I wasn't here in 1967, <laughs> but obviously there was a huge need. There is also a Caritas in Jordan, and I worked in Jordan for many years. And there's Caritas in Lebanon, there's Caritas in Syria. So each Caritas in those countries would be at the time caring for displaced people, Palestinian refugees. Here in the Holy Land, Caritas was catering at that time, serving the Palestinians who were displaced, mm. mostly in the West Bank. That has grown to include East Jerusalem, the Gaza Strip and others, but that is our history back that far. Of course, we've developed since, but our mission is basically the same still. Were these Palestinians that had lost absolutely everything? Yes, yes. These would be Palestinians. Some of them, if I, I'm sure you know your history, that some Palestinians were displaced in 1947-48. Many of those displaced Palestinians at the time of the foundation of the State of Israel, many were displaced into Gaza, and I lived in Gaza for three years. Many of the displaced went to Jordan, but some were displaced from what became the State of Israel to what came to be known as the West Bank. In 1967, many people who were in the West Bank were displaced for the first time if they had been resident in the West Bank, or for a second time, if they had come from other parts of the Holy Land, what became the State of Israel, and they settled in the West Bank, and they were displaced again and went to Jordan or went to other parts of the West Bank. So it was a complex situation with thousands of Palestinians displaced, having lost everything. Mm. And uh, you're here in Caritas. What products do you run here in Caritas? At the moment in Caritas, we're working in, here our headquarters is in Jerusalem. We are working in the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip. In the West Bank, first of all, I'll just tell you, we have different departments. We have a health department. We have a, what we call a pastoral, socio-pastoral department, which brings together our social work and our pastoral work and our youth programs. And we have a development department, which brings together food security, microloans, this is to help people to become independent, and vocational training, which at the moment is just dress design and sewing, but we hope to develop that. Then we have our finance and admin and our headquarters and our fundraising and our communication, but those are the works. Then within all of that, there is always the possibility of emergency relief when it's needed. So under the health department, we have the emergency relief as needed. So right now, in our health department, we have a clinic, a primary health care clinic with outreach to surrounding villages in Taibe, in the West Bank. And we have kind of part medical component to elderly care in Ramallah, but we're developing that a bit. So that is health. In Gaza, we have a lot of health care in Gaza, but that is ongoing. So if you're asking specifically about the coronavirus project, we have additional help in uh, our clinic in Taibe, including a free phone so that people can call in and speak to a doctor if they're worried. We have health care for our elderly in Ramallah, including also social care, food. And in Gaza, under the health care, we are working in close collaboration with the Ministry of Health in Gaza with other NGOs. The healthcare in Gaza is very vulnerable because of years of occupation, more recently the lockdown, the, the blockade, and then the lockdown because of the virus. And again, in the last year or more, 
the stopping of all US aid funds to Palestine. So that combination has left the healthcare system in Gaza very vulnerable. So since coronavirus, with the Ministry of Health, our person in Gaza, we have a very good person in charge there, plus a medical consultant, very experienced. They're working with the Ministry of Health and other NGOs who provide primary health care. And we have, Caritas has developed a contingency plan in communication with the others. So if there is a major outbreak of the virus in the community, Gaza is already divided into zones. This is by the Ministry of Health. And Caritas will take responsibility for giving primary health care, basic primary health care, to non-COVID patients within Gaza City. We will have three mobile teams, we already have experience in this, to give 24-hour cover within Gaza City area to visit the people in their homes or in a set location for people who need basic care that are not coronavirus. Uh, the rest of the Gaza Strip is divided and given responsibility given to other NGOs that do similar work. That hasn't happened yet because the virus is well controlled in Gaza. But as well as that, we do many other medical projects as ongoing projects in Gaza. Mm. Most of our response to the COVID is humanitarian. So in the West Bank, we have given a lot of food coupons, food packages, freshly cooked food for the elderly. Ask me what you want about these instead of me carrying on talking and I can tell you what you want to know. Yeah, I met one of your team in uh, Bejala and they were making boxes of food for people. Tell us a little bit about that. All right, you, met, you, met some, you must have met some of our volunteers probably, yeah. yes. Um, I'm not sure which project you met because we have different projects in, in the West Bank, but they're more or less the same. What we're doing, first of all, let me say that Caritas, it's a Roman Catholic, here they call us Latins, Roman Catholic organization, but our mission is all over the world. Caritas' mission is to help the poorest of the poor, regardless of race, religion, color, or anything. So that is how we work. But here in Palestine, because it is a small area, we work primarily through the Catholic Church and other churches, through the, the Christians. We work through the Ministry of Social Affairs. And depending on what projects we have, we work through the government. So for food security, we work through agriculture and all of that. So for this emergency, we have worked, are working with all parish priests, Latins, Orthodox, whoever they are. We're working with the Ministry of Social Affairs and depending where we are, for example, in Ramallah, we're also working with the mosques and the imams. So what you've met is probably some of our volunteers packing food boxes for people who we have identified as needy through the parishes and through the Ministry of Social Affairs and the local municipality. That's who we're working with in the Bethlehem, Beit Jala, Beit Zahur area. We got funds from our donors. Many of them are other Caritas organizations who are donor givers as well, like in CAFOD in England, Trocra in Ireland, uh, Sor Catholic, Caritas Belgium, these different places. So we get funds and we identified through the parishes and others, as I mentioned, who are the most in need when everyone is in need. And we delivered, first of all, we delivered food parcels and hygiene, meaning hand sanitizer, chlor, and things like that. Over the months of the weeks in Bethlehem, we found that many other organizations, thankfully, were doing the same thing. So people had got, some people, not all, had got a lot of what we would call dry stores. But what they needed was to be able to go and buy, you know, fresh vegetables or fruit or whatever. So we then got another project and we gave them just very recently, we're still doing it, giving them food coupons mm. and also more hygiene equipment. We have different projects funded by different areas and a part of the project with the food coupons includes educational toys for children under the age of 12 so that when schools were closed and these children might not have laptops or they might not have access to educational things and at least we give them something when they're in lockdown or no schools to help them in some kind of education. Those will be what you met in Bethlehem. Is there a big need at the moment, particularly with the virus in places like Bethlehem for food? Are people struggling and living in poverty? They're not working? There is almost, must be almost 100%. Don't quote me on that, I don't know what the percentage is. But in the Bethlehem area, as you know, where people depend so heavily on tourists and pilgrims, there is massive unemployment. And 
in the first few weeks, people had a little savings or they helped each other, churches helped them, mosques helped. But after a while, that help dries up. And if people don't get back to work, there will be very soon a deepening poverty. So there is need, and giving handouts like this is only an emergency help. What is really needed is getting back to work or work, money, cash for work, or some way to give employment to people. At the moment, Caritas doesn't have that capacity to, to do that. So there is a need for humanitarian aid, but giving food, coupons, cash, this is only a temporary help. It's emergency, but for how long can you live on emergency? So there is a huge, potentially huge problem in the Bethlehem area because it is so heavily dependent on tourism. Not just those working in hotels and, and drivers and bus drivers, but the olive wood industry, the drivers, the taxi drivers, the little cafes who serve food to the people doing the olive wood. If all of this, it's all so interconnected. That is, is a huge problem in the Bethlehem area. So you're seeing disaster in some ways it's beginning to unfold because there's, there's lockdown again and it's yes. been, the virus started in March and we're now in, uh, coming up to July. To July. This is a huge worry that this is starting, is coming up again. And in a sense, it's not unexpected because the, uh, many, many people, Palestinians, work in Israel. The virus is much more spread, widely spread in Israel, and it was the Palestinians working in Israel who brought the virus back to the West Bank much more than the other way. Mm. And in the West Bank, they didn't have the organized capacity, not surprising, other countries didn't either, mm. to quarantine everybody who came back. They tried, but it's not easy to do. And then you get people like the recent outbreak in Hebron, overcrowding, poverty, no possibility or little possibility of social distancing. By the time they get sick and they're tested, it's already spread. So it's a huge worry, actually, that this will spread more widely in the West Bank. Tell us a bit about your time in Gaza. I had worked, I've worked around the Middle East for many, many years. So I had worked in Israel, you might know Tanturi Communical Institute, in the years before the 2014 war. And I had visited Gaza a couple of times. So I, Gaza wasn't entirely an unknown area to me. Then I was free of my congregational responsibilities and my superiors were happy for me to try to go back and working with the poor again in some way. I have a medical background. So I thought I would go to Gaza. It was just at the end of the 2014 war and I thought I could offer my services in some way as a volunteer. I haven't worked as a nurse midwife for many years. So I came back here to visit Gaza and see how, who I might work with, because we don't have a con congregation of my a community of my congregation here. So I met Caritas. I met other organisations working in Gaza. I went to Gaza. I liked what I saw Caritas do, and I ended up working for Caritas in Gaza. But instead of going as a volunteer, just doing simple medical work or nursing work, I was asked because of my background. I was asked by the then General Secretary of Caritas if I would take a responsibility to be in charge of Caritas in Gaza because of the difficulty of people from headquarters visiting Gaza. So that's how I ended up there in Gaza for three years, which were very happy years there. Living in Gaza, of course, was not easy, but I loved the people. I loved Caritas staff there. We worked extremely well together, and I had just finished three years there when the apostolic administrator of the Latin Patriarchate Archbishop Pizzabella asked me would I come and take over as Secretary General of Caritas in Jerusalem, which surprised me. It was not what I ever expected, but I said yes. Why do you do what you do? I'm a Franciscan, I'm a missionary, and this is our life. I've been, my first mission as a young sister, I was a qualified nurse. I was assigned to Jordan. Um, we had a community in Jordan at the time, and I was assigned there as I was still in temporary vows. I was young. It was my first mission. I got to know the Palestinians. I got to know the Arab world. I loved everything about it, despite the difficulties of living here. So you've always been in the Middle East? Not always. I've been a lot in the Middle East, but I come from Ireland. But most of my uh, adult working life, and especially as a sister of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Divine Motherhood, I have spent most of my time in the Middle East, but then part of my time in England. I spent quite a bit of time in England as well. Are you making a difference here in the community? 
Caritas is making a difference. What's your prayer finally for the Middle East? Oh, my prayer for the Middle East is for a just peace. Some people say we can try to work for peace. Justice is harder to achieve. And yes, we must work for peace. But I think for real peace between two peoples who both claim this land as their heritage, there has to be some coming together, a living together in peace and justice for both peoples. But it has to be both and one cannot dominate the other. Okay, Sister Bridget, thank you very much. It's a pleasure meeting you.